brookbooksandbrookbooks.com or brookboothcoaching.com. You can find me in either place. I want to start by telling you a story today. Um, so I'm the post-Mormon. My husband is the active believing spouse. And years ago, I mean, we probably had maybe even five years. Um, he was telling me about how his beliefs weren't fully developed around Josie Smith, how he has a hundred percent on board. He was a hundred percent on board with everything else, but not necessarily a hundred percent on board with that. And I remember at the time, it was very much active believing Orthodox church internally. I freaked out. Like that's the best way to say it. I was extremely afraid. I pretty much just shut down the conversation. There was no space for what he was experiencing. There was no compassion. There was no, on my part, you know, help me understand what you think about this. I was only able to offer, you know, this is not something I'm willing to discuss or even hear from you. This is not an acceptable topic of conversation. We will not talk about this. It's all true. La 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 la. You know, end of discussion. That was very much how I responded. I blush a little, okay, maybe a lot when I reflect on this conversation, considering now that I've had my faith transition and I wanted to have that conversation with him in return. I blush when I think about how upset I was by his reaction to my faith transition. I expected him to be better than me, right? I ex which he often is, don't get me wrong. But my point is I had a double standard. Fundamentally, I wanted to be accepted and loved by him. And the question was, was I willing to offer the same in return? My track record would indicate maybe not. And I noticed that at the times I'm accepting of his frustration, his sense of betrayal, and his loss. I'm much kinder to him. And the times I'm thinking he should just be okay with my faith transition. And then I get defensive. I act like a victim. I get a little whiny, which usually means I'm a little less kind, right? So it's really interesting when you step back and you look at what's going on. It's no wonder that we're afraid to talk to our space spouses our loved ones about our faith transition and what's really going on inside. We know how we would act if the situation were reversed, right? We know. So I like to ask myself, you know, what do I want from him? And then I do my very best to make sure I'm offering him that. If I'm willing to give it to him, after I get it from him, that's just not the same. I want to be willing to give it to him even if he's not giving it to me. When I say it, I'm talking about love, I'm talking about support, I'm talking about acceptance, things like this. This is the type of person I want to be in this relationship. Not necessarily the spouse I was decades ago who couldn't even allow her husband to speak about his concerns and his you know, and let him be real. And I mentioned something earlier too that I want to touch on again. When I'm able to just let him be who he is and let me be who I am, it's, it, it creates this container for our marriage. Um, it creates it, it helps eliminate that double standard that I was referring to. It helps eliminate the fear of, you know, when I talked about we don't like to have these conversations because we know how we would react. It helps eliminate that fear. And this is what coaching has helped me become. It's helped me become that spouse who allows my husband to be who he is. It's helped me to allow myself to be who I am without making it mean you know, that we can't work together without, you know, letting us be who we are and have our differences and believing we can make this work. So if you're one of those people who wouldn't have given your spouse the same grace you're asking for, that's okay. 
like you're not that person anymore. I'm not that person anymore. Now I have a different standard for the type of spouse I want to be. I want to be the spouse who, you know, will give the love and support without having to get it first. I want to be the spouse who will give the love and support and hold the space without judgment, without necessarily having to get it first. That's what coaching has done for me. That's when, like when I think who I was to who I am today, such a big difference. And this is one of the skills I teach a lot of my clients. How do we really create that in our marriage? How do we become somebody who doesn't just shut down in fear? How do we become somebody who doesn't just clam up when a difficult conversation is brought to the surface? How do we become somebody who doesn't just say, la 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 la, when something challenging happens? It's possible. I was once somebody who couldn't do it. I am now. There are skills. There are techniques. There are ways you just develop and practice and become that person. And this is what we do in coaching. So if you're interested in becoming that type of spouse, reach out to me and let's set up a time for a free call. I offer a few every month. You can get yours. All you need to do is go to my website, brookeboothcoaching.com, and you'll see a way to do it very easily there on the homepage. You can also message me if that's the easiest way for you. All right, wishing you the best.